Okay. We're live. Uh, it's doing its thing. One second. Okay. Okay, we're all set. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first meeting of the Senate Executive Nominations Committee in the 444th session of the Maryland General Assembly. Um, we have uh, 28, 29 appointees tonight, 10 judges who we will take first. Uh, we are going to have, it looks like four meetings with those that have already been appointed. So it'll be tonight and the next three Mondays. And then when the green bag comes in, we'll probably have a week off and uh, go from there, depending on how many uh, people we have. So uh, with that, let's uh, move in. Uh, I'm going to have each of the judges uh, introduce themselves and if the sen their senator is here to say something, and then we will swear all of them in uh, at, at the end. So uh, the first person up or the first uh, judge up is uh, Judge Stephen Gould, uh, judge of the Court of Appeals, and he's appointed to serve a term of 10 years beginning, uh, well, he began September uh, 10th, 2021. And uh, Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm very happy and delighted today to ask my esteemed colleagues to support Judge Stephen Gould for appointment to Maryland's Court of Appeals, the highest court in our state. Before being appointed by Governor Hogan to the Court of Appeals, Judge Gould was, uh, as you know, served on the Maryland Court of Special Appeals. Um, and before being appointed to judiciary, he was in private practice, including being a founding partner of Brown, Gold, and, and Keeley. I, I believe that um, he is, he brings his uh, extensive uh, experience both on the court, but also in private practice to the Court of Appeals and um, and particularly his private practice to, to serve Maryland and Marylanders and Maryland um, in the Maryland Court of Appeals. Um, he is a graduate of Boston University Law School and the University of Pennsylvania. So uh, he got his undergraduate from the University of Pennsylvania. So I give you Judge Gold. Okay. Uh, Judge Gold, if you'd like to say a few things about yourself and the position, and we'll take questions. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Senator Lee, for that gracious uh, introduction. I, I very much appreciate this opportunity to address this committee. And I'd like to use my time to impress upon its members just how grateful and humbled I am for having the privilege to serve the citizens of Maryland on the Court of Appeals. And I'm all the more grateful that I get to do so with six colleagues who are extraordinary jurists and who exemplify, who are people who exemplify what it means to be gracious uh, and, and collegial. As someone who reveres the law and our system of justice, and as someone who practiced law for 25 years before becoming a judge, I find it exceptionally liber extraordinarily liberating to be in a position where my sole job is not to try to achieve a result for a particular client, for a paying client, but rather to get it, to get it to get it right based upon the facts and the law without bias, without prejudice, without partiality. It doesn't matter if the case involves sophisticated parties from represented by prestigious law firms or whether it's a, de a destitute individual penning his, his petition from, a, from his jailhouse, from his, from his uh, jailhouse cell. Every case gets my full attention and consideration. And in every case, I'm guided by four principles. The first is be prepared, which means carefully reading the briefs, the, the record, the legal authority, and the governing legal authorities. 
The second principle is approach each case with humility and an openness to learn from and be persuaded by the attorneys that appear before the court and from my colleagues. Third, be mindful of the impact that our decisions have on the parties to the case and the citizens of the state of Maryland. And fourth, and perhaps most importantly, the public's faith that the system works in a fair, impartial, and consistent manner requires, is something that must be earned every day in every single case. It's an extraordinary responsibility and that I am privileged to be able to work with such wonderful colleagues is something I think about and remind myself of every day. I've been sitting for cases on the Court of Appeals since the, since the October session of last year. The cases are interesting, challenging, and varied. The challenge of untangling a complex legal issue invigorates and energizes me. And, with, and I'm grateful for the governor's appointment and with this committee's, and I hope with this committee's support, I will continue to, in the years to come, to serve the people of Maryland in this position. Thank you, and I'll be happy to hear any, to answer any questions. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? If so, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Senator. I just have a president. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a, a couple of, of questions. Um, the so, Judge Gould, thank you so much for for being here today. Sincerely appreciate your time and your commitment to public service. It is uh, admirable for your service on the Court of Special Appeals and then currently on the Court of Appeals. Thank you. Um, two separate but interrelated questions. The first is. Um, I don't know if in the last two years in the, as the Court of Special Appeals, if you'd had any uh, cases that, re that uh, required the, you as uh, overseeing the case to review legislative history or, or uh, look at legislative history in order to interpret a statute in a particular way. Certainly on the Court of Appeals, that's a more often the case um, uh, for the, the legal analysis. And I'm curious, as you think about when you hear legislative history, what does that mean to you? What is the legislative record that is most probative or, or informative as you determine how a statute should be interpreted? Well, to, to the first part of your question, the answer is yes, I have had occasions in interpreting statutes, multiple occasions in interpreting statutes to, uh, to, to, look, at, uh, to look at the legislative history. Looked at, we've looked at testimony from hearings, report from special committees, uh, basically every type, every piece, every material we can get our hands on, we've looked at when we've been called upon to look at the legislative history. When interpreting a statute, our first, ob our objective, of course, is to interpret a statute in, in, and implement the intent of the General Assembly. That's our goal. And the first place we look when we're interpreting the statute, of course, is the language of the statute itself. And if the language of the statute is clear and unambiguous, that's where our analysis ends. We interpret and we enforce the plain language. Now, legislative history in that context, when, we, when, it's, when it's clear and unambiguous, we can still look at the legislative history as a backstop, as a check to make sure, just as, to, as more as a confirmatory process. But that's, that's the role of legislative history when the statute is unambiguous. If the statute is ambiguous, of course, then we can actually pay, I guess, accord more weight to the legislative history because that becomes then a tool that assists us in resolving the ambiguity to implement the legislature's intent. Senator, I hope that answers your question. I'd be happy to. It does. I, I think when you think that there may be a conflict of, of prior, um, prior judicial precedent 
in place versus what might have been legislative history? Do you think that the judicial precedent takes uh, is, is more probative or is, is more in, impactful than the legislative history? You mean if, if an issue- A prior case. Implicates a prior case, which may be at odds with the legislative history? Right. If I'm understanding your question correctly, Senator, if, if, if there is a case from the Court of Appeals which interprets, which has construed a statute in a particular manner. And that particular interpretation can be considered at odds with some aspect of legislative history. The, court, the, the precedent from the Court of Appeals is what I would follow unless applying the basic you know, principles of stare decisis, a, a departure from that case is warranted. Thank you, that's very helpful. W one further question, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's a lot of talk in the judicial or in the legal community about the concern about the impartiality of the courts. Um, and I think, uh, you know, often this has been talked about on a federal level, but certainly is uh, an incredibly important component for the Court of Appeals. Um, and certainly, you know, what, who appoints an individual judge can give the perception of certain uh, of certain outputs. And I appreciated your your um, comment about that fourth principle of being fair and impartial from the very beginning. I'm just curious if you could speak to that sense of impartiality and that uh, how you would approach these questions and and the importance of the people's confidence in the court to be independent entirely and not in any way beholden to somebody that is making the appointment? Well, I guess the first thing I would say in response to that, Senator, is I feel very grateful that I am a judge in the Maryland judicial system because having sat as a court of special appeals judge for two and a half years, and I sat with my colleagues who were appointed by various governors in the last 15 years. I can't think of a single occasion where it appeared to me that politics or personal preferences or, or political inclinations were driving the outcome or driving the analysis. Everybody, now we all have different we all might have different perspectives and different ways of looking at things, but it was always driven by trying to get the right answer. And so I would just say to the people of the state of Maryland, we're very fortunate that at least from my vantage point being on the court, uh, that's the approach of the judges that, that I've worked with. And, and by the way, in my four months on the court of appeals, it's been exactly the same thing. It has, I have not seen any indication that people are driven by ideology. Thank you so much, Judge Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Look forward to your service. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, are there any? Uh, Senator Lamb. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Young. Just wanted to, to have one follow-up question to what the President was asking about. And uh, to, to probe a little bit further when it comes to past precedent that uh, the court has rolled on. Um, you know, I guess when it comes to past rulings, um, most oftentimes the court will abide by those past rulings, I guess under the, the principle of uh, stare decisis. And um, there may be some instances where the court would find um, a need to uh, counter past rulings that have been set up as precedent by prior courts uh, within the state. Mm -hmm. What can you illuminate us on what you think may be thresholds for when past precedent in decisions in prior cases uh, would not be abided by? Um, and maybe your thought process behind some of that. Well, it, unless a case becomes outdated based upon changes in society or changes in the law or changes in technology, there has to be some significant 
uh, significant change in 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 the particular in the particular area that we're talking about in order to 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 be one of those rare situations where we, we would where a court would overturn prior precedent. Um, it could be it could be that subsequent experience has proven that the the prior case was unworkable. It could be that there is a, a, a shift in in the way we look at a particular issue. Certainly, uh, stare decisis is a is an important principle, but if it was a if it was a uh, immutable rule, then we would still be living under Plessy versus Ferguson. So, stare decisis is something that we take ser- we have to take seriously, and we have to be persuaded that there's some, a very compelling change in circumstances or in or uh, in the law that, rec- that that justifies a change in, in our case law in our precedent. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you that I think there needs to be a high bar, but that prior cases are not immutable, but um, would caution, you know, just, uh, you know, have a high bar and threshold for overturning past precedent in prior rulings. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from anyone? If not, uh, thank you very much, Judge, and we will move on and uh, have the swearing in when we get through the list here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next up is Kristen Jane Richardson and Senator West. Is Senator West here? I am indeed. And okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is uh, indeed a pleasure to introduce Kristen Jane Richardson. She is, was appointed to the District Court for Baltimore County. She is a graduate of the University of Maryland Law School back in 2007. And from her graduation until 2018, she served as one of the state's attorneys in the office of the Baltimore County State's Attorney. Since 2018, she has served as an administrative law judge in the Office of Administrative Hearings. So she's not only practiced in court, she's also served as a judge for several years. I should also note, as a matter of interest, that as an undergraduate, uh, Ms. Richardson served as Miss University of Maryland Eastern Shore for a year. So with that, I give you Ms. Richardson. Judge Richardson, excuse me. Judge Richardson. Thank you very much, Senator West, for those remarks. Um, Chairman Young, thank you very much, and I want to acknowledge all of the members of the Executive Nomination uh, Committee. Um, I am very grateful to Governor Hogan for this appointment and for him entrusting me with it. Um, It is a privilege and an honor to serve as a member of Maryland's Judiciary, and I look forward to continuing to serve the citizens of this state. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions of Judge Richardson or comments? It appears not. So thank you, Judge. And uh, we'll get back to you again when we swear everyone in. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Judge Dorothy Jean Wilson and Senator Kosmar. Yes. uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, It is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Dorothy J. Wilson, uh, and she has impressed me as a mild-mannered, nice, very nice person, but if I ever come before her, I hope that's how she is, but (laughs) no, but she's got such a nice smile. She has such a great resume, five pages worth, Um, and she is right here from Maryland. She went to Aberdeen High School, and she went to uh, Maryland Francis uh, King Carey School of Law, and she did go to Duke University. So I don't know about that, but we'll let it slide. But only kidding, only kidding. But anyway, she is a great nominee for for, um, uh, District Administrative Judge, District Court of Maryland for Baltimore County. And I am very proud to know her. And actually I promised I would come over and watch her in action in the interim. So 
you take it away. Okay, thank you. Judge Wilson. Thank you very much, Senator Klausmeyer, and good evening to the members of the committee. Uh, it has really been my privilege to serve as a district court judge for all these many years. Uh, it has truly been an amazing, wonderful, and very humbling experience for me. I'm so grateful to have had this opportunity, thankful to the governor, and I'm hoping to continue to be able to serve the citizens of Maryland. And unless the committee would have any questions for me, I would like to extend my thanks and appreciation to the members of this committee for your time and for your consideration of me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are, are there any questions for uh, Judge Wilson? Okay, I see none and thank you and we'll get back to you shortly. Thank you. Uh, next is Judge Susan Chambers Zellweger and uh, Senator West again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is great to have three new district court judges in Baltimore County. Lots of new blood coming in. Um, Judge Zellweger was just recently appointed to the district court. Uh, she is a graduate of the University of Baltimore School of Law uh, back in 1997. And since her graduated, graduation until her appointment, she was uh, serving in the Office of Public Defender for Baltimore County. Her practice was based in the district court division. So she was in the district court every single day. It's hard to imagine any district court judge has as much district court experience as Judge Zellweger. Um, judge Zellweger, the, the, uh, it's up to you. Go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Sue Chambers Zellweger. This is my husband, Jake, seated behind me. <laughs> um, it, I, it is an honor and a privilege to appear before you today. Thank you very much. I, um, every day when I take the bench, I'm humbled and grateful. I want to extend my most sincere thank you to Governor Hogan for the opportunity to serve on the Baltimore County District Court bench. I appreciate his faith and confidence. Uh, thank you to Senator West for your guidance. Uh, and thank you to my husband and my family. I have, we have two daughters. Um, their love and constant support is something that I um, am eternally grateful for. Um, as parents, Jake and I have tried to instill good values in our daughters by leading by example and teaching them how to be good people. And I'm trying to continue that um, in a certain degree uh, on the bench. I, when I was appointed, a friend of mine said, kindness costs the judge nothing, but it means everything to the lawyers and litigants that appear before her. I think those are really important words to live by. I'm trying to implement that every day as a judge to show people kindness and respect and afford them the dignity that they deserve. Um, when they appear before me in Baltimore County. I hope to do a great job uh, and continue what I've started here on the bench. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Zellweger. Are there any questions or uh, comments from any of the uh, members? Again, I see none, so it was easy. We'll get back to you shortly. Thank you. Okay, let's move to Carol Howard in uh, Howard County's District 10. And uh, we have Judge Carol Lewis and uh, Senator Reddy. Reedy. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to my colleagues from the committee, it's really an honor to present Carol Lewis uh, to you and give her my strong endorsement. Uh, Kara is, um, you know, Carroll County through and through. She is a, a, a graduate. She graduated from the um, University of Maryland School of Law, magna cum laude, which is a level that I could only dream of attaining. And uh, she's done outstanding work before her nomination to the district court. She's done outstanding work in our state's attorney's office in Carroll County. Uh, she also served in the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office before that and has private practice experience as well. She was uh, very influential and involved in, in our efforts in the state's attorney's office on, on preventing, drug, uh, preventing drug use and drug overdose and, and dealing with those issues. Um, um, before she was appointed to the court, I think Governor Hogan made an outstanding choice with having a Judge Lewis, and um, I would just ask for your strong support. And, and without further ado, I'd turn it over to, to Judge Carol Lewis. Senator Reedy, thank you for your comments, and thank you to the Executive Nominations Committee for taking the time to consider me this evening. I would like to thank Governor Hogan for the appointment and for entrusting me with this position. As Senator Reedy indicated, I am a graduate of Carroll County Public Schools. I went to University of Maryland College Park for undergrad and University of Maryland for law school. 
I was a prosecutor in Baltimore City before I came back home. And for the last six and a half years prior to my appointment, I was a prosecutor with the Carroll County State's Attorney's Office, including in the drug court program as the drug court prosecutor. I look forward to continuing my public service in this position as district court judge, and I'm incredibly grateful for this opportunity. I do have my family here with me this evening. Um, I could introduce them, and they supported me throughout my uh, application process. So I just wanted to introduce them and I would be happy to take any questions from the committee if anyone has any. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, President Ferguson. Just uh, would like to second the nomination of uh, soon to be Judge Lewis. Um, there is one part of her resume that she did not mention, which is that she is a phenomenal softball player. And I know this because of our Cary Law School softball years together, and she was an all-star. So uh, clearly an excellent uh, uh, softball player, mother, and judicial expert, uh, and we are honored to, to have her as a part of the bench. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? If not, uh, thank you, Judge, and we'll get back to you shortly. So we will move on to um, District Court for Frederick and Washington Counties, District 11. And we have uh, Victoria uh, Lobley and Sen uh, Senator Quarterman uh, could not be here tonight. He I'm here, me. Mr. Chair. Oh, you're here. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and colleagues. Uh, I am happy and proud uh, to present to this committee the Honorable Victoria Lobley. Uh, Judge Lobley is a lifelong resident of Maryland. Uh, who's lived in Washington County for nearly 20 years. Uh, Judge Lovely is a graduate from the University of Maryland College Park, uh, as well as a graduate of the University of Baltimore School of Law. Uh, she's worked for multiple law firms here in Western Maryland, including being a sole practitioner of her own firm here in Hagerstown since 2015. Uh, during her legal career, she has practiced criminal law and family law matters, often representing children and family custody matters. She's tried many, many cases in both the district and circuit courts of Washington County. Uh, Judge Lobley's vast experience in law has proven to be a true asset to our legal and judicial community. Her resume is quite impressive and highly commended. Uh, therefore, I fully support the nomination of this judicial appointment and for Judge Victoria Lobley to continue her honorable service as judge of the district court in Washington County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Judge? It's, um... Judge Lobley here. You're on mute. I think, I think Judge Lobley, you may be on mute. My apologies. There you go. <laughs> I forgot to unmute. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much, uh, Senator Quarterman, for that lovely introduction. I would like to thank Governor Hogan for his confidence in me um, in his selection. Um, I'm new to the bench. I've been sitting for about three months, and I can tell you that I truly appreciate the awesome sense of responsibility in judging on a day-to-day -day basis. It's very important that the people of our community see the judicial branch as approachable. They can come in, we treat them well. Um, I know that that's not always been the case and it's our job to make sure that that happens. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, are there any questions or comments? If not, uh, thank you very much. And you. we'll see you again in just a couple of minutes. Okay. So we'll move to District Court in Montgomery County, District 6. And uh, uh, we have Michael Orman, Glenn III, and Sandra Kagan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, because none of us are on enough Zooms, I actually Zoomed with both of my judicial candidates uh, and found them to be delightful and very well qualified. Mr. Gwynn, uh, his background and the bulk of his career has been in Prince George's County, where he is in the state's attorney's since 2009. He helped Judge Patty Lewis set up a mental health court in Prince George's County. He has worked in private practice uh, as well in a law firm, as well as with staff counsel at GEICO. So he has different experience. And it was particularly meaningful to me that he is involved in the community and gives of his time to his community association and to nonprofits in the area. 
the last thing I'll say is that I was impressed by his sensitivity to economic and ethnic differences. And we had a conversation about the diversity in Montgomery County that he would be seeing in his, uh, in his courtroom. So I am delighted to introduce and present Mr. Glynn for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Thank you, Senator Kagan, for those kind words. Good evening to members of the committee. Um, I am honored and pleased with the trust and the confidence that Governor Hogan has invested in me. I'd like to thank Governor Hogan for the appointment to the Montgomery County District Court. I wanna thank the member of the committee for your time and consideration in this matter. Um, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to continue to serve the community in the position as a district court judge. Um, I truly, truly look forward to this. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that someone may have. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, um, thank you. And we'll be back to you shortly. And we will move on to um, Patrick uh, Jeffrey Mays, also District 17, and Senator Kagan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, uh, another delightful conversation on Zoom last week was with Patrick Mays. He has worked with the uh, as an assistant, assistant state's attorney and prosecutor for 17 years. He is the chief of the gang division. He uh, also gives back to, as a guest lecturer at the universities at Shady Grove and George Mason. He's involved with the police academy. He has worked on domestic violence issues, child abuse, and has worked very meaningful to me with first responders as well. Um, a very high recommendation to me comes from retired Judge Nelson Roop, uh, with whom uh, he has worked and is pledging to continue Judge Roop's commitment to the drug court in Montgomery County. With that, Mr. Chair, colleagues, I'm delighted to present Patrick Mays for your consideration. Okay. Thank you, Senator Kagan, and uh, good evening to the members of the committee. It's an honor to appear before you this evening. I wanna thank uh, Governor Hogan for his confidence in me. Uh, I am thrilled to be able to transition from uh, my current role in public service to service to the people of the state of Maryland in the judiciary. Uh, I can't wait to start work, which will be next week. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm joined this evening, and I wanna introduce my wife, Winnie, uh, who's sitting uh, next to me. We'll be celebrating our 10th anniversary in May. Um, and so she has been my greatest supporter for many years beyond those 10 years, but um, I'm happy to be here this evening and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any uh, questions or comments for Judge Mays? I see none. So thank you. And we'll be back to you in just a couple minutes. Uh, we will move on to district court uh, for Caroline Cecil, Kent, Queen Anne's, and Talbot Counties, District 3. And Senator Hershey uh, cannot be here tonight, but uh, extends his support and, and best wishes. So, uh, um, Mr. Craddeville, if you want to say a little more about yourself and that we don't have someone here to introduce you, feel free. Uh, are you here? You're on mute, sir. Holy. He was admitted. Um, I'm not sure. Can you hear me now? There you go. Uh, yes, there we, we can go. Hear you now. Sorry about that. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, um, uh, thank you for for the hearing here this evening. My name is Frank Craddeville, Jr. I've been on the bench now for 10 years here in Queen Anne's County. It's been an honor to serve the citizens of Queen Anne's County on the district court in District 3. Um, I very much appreciate the opportunity to have served over these last number of years and obviously I'm hoping to continue to do so and appreciate the consideration of the committee. Um, my background is I was a prosecutor the majority of my career, also spent time in the public defender's office for a number of years, uh, and also did some private practice prior to going on the bench as well. So happy to answer any questions. And again, want to thank the committee for their consideration. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? 
getting off easy also. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right Thank back you. to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rosalind Tang uh, from the, the Special Co uh, Appeals Court, uh, District 30, uh, Sandra King. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce and recommend to the committee Rosalind Tang, resident of Montgomery County's 39th Legislative District. Um, I have not had the pleasure yet of meeting Judge Tang, but I have spoken to people who have known her since she graduated law school. And the word I've heard over and over about her is perfection. Um, one of her former employers, uh, John McCarthy, the state's attorney, was here in Annapolis last week. And uh, he told me that she was so good at her job that they started training new attorneys in the Tang way. Um, another person said, Rosalind never goes, does anything halfway. She is fully invested in what, whatever she does. But I think the observation that was uh, most impressive to me uh, was, was when I was told that despite all of her accomplishments and awards, Rosalind never thinks she is too important. And at the end of the day, if some menial task needs to be done, She's the first one to jump in to help. Um, Judge Tang's outstanding experience, her work ethic, and her commitment to the practice of law. It is my great pleasure to recommend her to serve on Montgomery County's Court of Special Appeals. Okay. Thank you. And uh, are you here, Judge? Uh, yes, Tang? I'm here. Uh, Chair Chairman, oh. uh, Mr. Young, I'd like yes. to say something about. Uh, the soon to be Judge Tang. Uh, this is Senator Lee. I'd also like to add my words of support for uh, uh, Rosalind Tang and thank Governor Hogan for appointing such an esteemed candidate for this high uh, court. Um, she brings to this important court her very vast experience, both in the uh, private and the public sector, as Senator King had mentioned. And earlier in her early career, she served as an associate county attorney and as uh, Nancy, uh, Senator King said, she was an assistant state's attorney in the Montgomery County where she worked under our, our wonderful state's attorney, John McCarthy. And she was really high, highly, highly respected for her work and her ability to effectively work with law enforcement, victims of crimes, and all the community leaders from all different communities to help prosecute crimes and keep families and communities safe and also to give uh, underrepresented communities um, and all different communities, especially immigrant communities, um, access to our criminal justice system. Um, she is the daughter of immigrants from Taiwan and she received her um, BA from Duke University and her JD, her law degree from Southern Baptist University's uh, Dayton School of Law. And this will be a historic appointment because she will be the first, the first Asian American ever appointed to the Court of Special Appeals. Uh, despite her very hectic schedule, um, she's always been able to be active in our community and also in the legal community. She was president of the Asian Pacific American Bar Association, president of the Women's Bar Association of Montgomery County, and she served on the executive committee of the, of the uh, Montgomery County Bar Association. She's married to Robert uh, Jack Caruso, who serves with great distinction in the Montgomery County Police Department, um, as her stellar track record attests, uh, she will serve Marylanders and the Maryland Court of Special Appeals with great distinction. So I give you the soon to be Judge Rosalind Tang. Thank you, Senator King and Senator Lee for the very warm introduction. Um, it is my privilege to appear before this committee as you consider my nomination for the Court of Special Appeals Seventh Appellate Circuit representing Montgomery County. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those closest to me for their support and encouragement. My parents, Donald and Ruby, my sister, Alice, my brother, Jeff, my husband, Rob, and my mentor, Judge Eric Johnson. I would also like to thank Governor Hogan for appointing me to serve on the bench. I have been a lifelong resident of Montgomery County. I grew up in Potomac. I attended school in Bethesda. And although I stepped away from Maryland to complete my college and law school education, after I graduated from law school, I returned to Montgomery County and worked in government and private practice in Rockville. 
I am, like uh, Senator Susan Lee commented, I am the proud daughter of Taiwanese immigrants. My parents came to the U.S. in the early 1970s, first to Bowling Green, Kentucky, and then eventually to Montgomery County, where they set their roots. I was a Chinese restaurant kid. My parents started one of the earliest Chinese restaurants in Montgomery County. It was called Seven Seas, located in Rockville. They eventually sold the restaurant years later, but it was a staple in the Montgomery County community. And having been raised in that environment, I inherited my parents' work ethic. There was no such thing as an eight hour workday. Uh, the attitude was to work as hard and as long um, until the job was done and to pay attention to the fine details, plan ahead to maximize efficiency and productivity, exceed expectations and raise the bar. Be kind and fair to people, be generous to others and remain humble. Um, I, in this position, will follow the law and I will maintain the integrity of the judiciary. Throughout my professional career, I have had the privilege of serving the state of Maryland and Montgomery County in criminal and civil cases and serving clients in private practice in real estate disputes, business disputes, and family disputes. I view cases with an open mind and I value the different opinions of my colleagues in, on challenging and nuanced legal issues. Um, finally, if confirmed, I will continue to apply the tenets inherited from my parents, work hard, raise the bar, be kind, and stay humble. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions or comments for Judge Tom? Uh, I see none. Um, Oh, okay, we have uh, one last judge and we will be back with you and uh, no, we have no more. Okay, it's I'll usually- I'll need to administer the oath, Chair Young. Yeah, it's usually our procedure to vote at the end, but I guess if we're administering the oath, we should take a vote on the judges now. We could, we could still vote at the end, we just administer the oath now. Okay. Before they all leave the, the uh, meeting. It's up to you. Okay. I just thought we want to prove them before we swore them in, but okay. Um, could everyone black themselves out for a minute so that we can see the judges on the screen? All right, you want to proceed with the swearing in? Yes, if everyone could raise their right hand. Do you solemnly swear under the penalties of perjury that the statements you make and the testimony you give before this committee will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. I do. Okay, that is it, I guess. Uh, congratulations to all of you and thank you for being here. I'm sorry we couldn't meet you in person, but. I guess it was more convenient for you to do it this way. But uh, again, congratulations and thank you. 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 Thank you all. All right. Okay, we will move on with the uh, rest of the agenda. And next up is... Uh, Accountability and Implement Implementation Board, and it's um, Dr. Mara Dos and Senator Raleigh. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to introduce uh, Mara Dos to the committee. Uh, Mara has, uh, has an excellent resume, receiving her PhD from Morgan State, her master's from Bowie State, and uh, for the past 30 plus years, has worked diligently at Prince George's Community College, climbing the chairs. She's currently Associate Vice President for Teaching, Learning and Student Success. I strongly re recommend her appointment and ask the committee to give her a favorable vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions or comments for uh, Ms. Doss? If not, uh, thank you and we will
move on to uh, Fagan Harris from District yeah, Mr. 40. Mr. Chairman, does Ms. Sir. Ross have a chance to say hello? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I jump the gun sometimes. Yes, certainly. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to come before you um, this evening, and I'm very excited about this process and appointment. All right, thank you very much. Any questions or comment for uh, Dr. Dose? If not, apologize and thank you. Okay, let's move to Fagan Harris, uh, District 45, Senator McCray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to say it's a proud privilege and honor to be able to recognize my friend, my neighbor, my constituent, a leader in Baltimore City, the state of Maryland, for such a distinguished uh, position as the Accountability Board. I know that uh, I see my colleagues, uh, Senator Ferguson and Senator Hayes, would also agree with that, uh, uh, Fagan, that we're, it, we're privileged to have you represent us in this space in a, in a Maryland capacity. And Mr. Chi, I just uh, wanted to lean in to my colleagues and lift that piece of it up before he said a few words. So I say thank you for this opportunity just to share something about my friend, uh, but most importantly, a leader in the state of Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Senator McCray, and, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's an honor to be before all of you tonight. Um, I came up in Maryland Public Schools since I started kindergarten down in PG County and finished high school in Anne Arundel, and I spent pretty much my entire adult career working in Baltimore City and specifically working for the young people of Baltimore City. So, uh, thank you for the for the honor to be considered, and I really appreciate it. Thank you again, Senator McCray. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, we have uh, four more on this board. Uh, we'll go to Dr. Kerwin, Dr. William Kerwin, uh, District 19 and Senator Kramer. Yes, good evening, Mr. Chair and members of executive noms. Um, I'm not quite sure where to begin with the introduction of uh, Dr. William Britt Kerwin. Um, his list of accomplishments would keep us here uh, to the point where you all would be pitching tents and uh, we continue this conversation into the wee hours. So uh, I will try to give a brief summary um, and even that is quite lengthy. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, our University of Maryland system has been shaped by Dr. Kerwin. Um, Dr. Kerwin served as the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs from 1981 to 1986. From 86 to 1988, Dr. Kerwin served as President of the University of Maryland College Park. 1988, excuse me, Provost, I beg your pardon, from 86 to 88. In 88, Vice President of Academic Affairs. 1989, president of the University of Maryland College Park, where he served until 1998. Um, he got a little bit sideways, went down an alley, uh, left the University of Maryland for the Ohio State to serve as their president from 1998 to 2002, but he got back on Main Street and returned to the university uh, system of Maryland to serve as the chancellor from 2002 to 2015. Uh, the mathematics building, <clears throat> pardon me, at the University of Maryland College Park is named in honor of Dr. Kerwin. Um, and of course, Dr. Kerwin served as chair of the Maryland Commission on innovation and excellence uh, in education. And, and, and the committee was basically known as the Kerwin Commission. Uh, he is exceptionally well qualified to serve on the Accountability and Impl Implementation Board. And with that, uh, I will conclude what I have to say and just that it's an honor to introduce Dr. Kerwin. Uh, thank you, Senator Kramer. I think almost everyone on here could say great things about Dr. Kerwin. Uh, 
as a person and for all his accomplishments. But uh, is there anyone else that would like to before we go to Dr. Kerwin? If not, uh, Senator King. I have to add my two cents to all that. And Dr. Kerwin, just the amount of work and devotion that he put into the, the blueprint um, was just absolutely exceptional. And he was, yes. was such a pleasure to work with. And I just can't imagine a, a better person to be on this board than uh, Dr. Kerwin. So our thanks to you for all, all of yourself that you put into this. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Kerwin. Well, thank you very, very much. Uh, first, Senator Kramer, for your very gracious uh, comments. And uh, my longtime friend, uh, Senator King, I so appreciate your words and the terrific work you did as a member of the, uh, of, of, of the commission. Um, I've said on many occasions that the honor and privilege of chairing the commission is uh, perhaps the most important uh, uh, thing I've ever worked on in my entire life. And it is just an honor and privilege to be able to continue uh, working uh, uh, toward the fulfillment of the blueprint uh, aspirations and promises as a member of the AIB. So thank you very much for your consideration of my appointment. Thank you, Dr. Um, Kerwin. Mr. Chairman, if I may real fast, simply because I can't help myself, um, quick little trivia here. Does anyone know, and then of course, Dr. Kerwin will validate whether this is accurate or not, where Dr. Kerwin's name, Britt, originates? <laughs> anyone on the committee want to take a stab at that? <laughs> Dr. Kerwin, is it not correct that it is because your middle name is English? That's correct. My Friends of my parents said, we can't call uh, this baby uh, Bill, every William's a Bill, let's find something different. So they played around with English and out came Brit. And that's what I've been known of since I was in a, known as since I was in a crib. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very interesting. Okay, well, Dr. Kerwin, thank you again. And thank you always for all you've done. So, we will move on to Joseph Manko from uh, District 46 and uh, President Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did you, there was another beforehand. Did I, I just want to make sure I didn't skip? Dr. Lynch? Oh, I did. I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll come back. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, members of the committee, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have known, had the honor of knowing Joe Manko for almost 20 years now. Um, we knew each other as classroom teachers. Uh, where he taught in West Baltimore for, uh, was in the classroom for seven years and then was a resident principal and then was the unbelievably incredible principal of Liberty Elementary where um, uh, Joe totally redefined what it meant to embed a community in a school and started with a little side project that the community got involved in that became a national model for how to create a true school community where the community was part of educational lives for children. Um, he has been recognized nationally from many organizations. Uh, he is now at the ABLE Foundation, and I cannot think of a better person to bring that school-based knowledge of how to bring the supports that kids need to be successful than Joe Manko. And so it's my honor to introduce him to you all tonight. Thank you. Um, are you there? Oh. Yeah, thank you so okay, much. Uh, yeah, thank Manko. you so much, uh, Senator Ferguson. Um, I'm just, you know, incredibly honored uh, to be considered for this position. Um, just very excited to be working hand in hand with my colleagues to bring uh, the blueprint uh, to life and um, do wonderful things for kids throughout the state of Maryland. So um, thank you so much for, um, for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Micah? If not, thank you. And we'll go to Dr. Jennifer Lynch and District 12 and Sandra Lamb. Thank you, uh, Chairman Young. It's my pleasure to be able to uh, introduce and bring forward to this committee, Dr. Jennifer Lynch, who has been um, a real staple in uh, the heart of my district in Catonsville. Uh, she, for I guess 15 years now, has been 
the school principal at Hillcrest Elementary School um, in Catonsville and just done a phenomenal job there. More recently has gone on to serve as a director of educational partnership for Baltimore County government. Um, but in previous um, parts of her career had also served as the assistant principal and as a school psychologist. So brings um, a diverse background and level of experience to this role. She also has the pedigree to go along with it, having earned a PhD in organizational leadership and policy studies in education. So known her for a few years and it's really a pleasure to be able to introduce her and to have her serve on this accountability and implementation board and a very important role for our state uh, so let me, with that, hand it over to Dr. Lynch. Dr. Thank Lynch. You. Thank you so much, Senator, and thank you, Chairman. And I would just like to thank uh, Governor Hogan for um, his appointment and faith in me. It is an honor and a privilege to sit um, with these other very esteemed leaders um, to bring forth the blueprint into full implementation. And so I feel lucky to be considered amongst these um, highly qualified and really exceptional leaders in their field. And I look forward to the work ahead. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments for Dr. Lynch? If not, uh, thank you very much. And we will move to the last member of this uh, group. Um, Dr. Laura Stapleton and District 20 and Senator Smith. Well, good evening, everyone, and, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's my honor to uh, introduce Dr. Stapleton. Uh, she has fantastic credentials. She is a, a BA in economics and Japanese from the University of Michigan, Go Blue. Uh, she has a master's in education in curriculum and infrastructure from George Mason and a PhD in measurement statistics and evaluations from the University of Maryland. She's been a professor since 2005, and she's now currently the interim dean of the College of Education at the University of Maryland. So with that, it is my distinct honor and privilege uh, to produce, to present Ms. Stapleton. So that over to you, uh, Dr. Stapleton. Okay. Sure, okay. thank you so much. Um, I would like to thank Governor Hogan for nominating me. Uh, the nominating committee, as Jennifer mentioned, it is a fabulous group of people, and I've already learned a lot from the other six of us. Um, but I mostly I look forward to implementing this wonderful plan uh, and working collaboratively with the school districts and with MSDE. I think we have a long way to go, but together we can make it happen. I'll also add, Mr. Chairman, uh, according to her, her, her Twitter feed, she is a strong Wordle player. So it's a strong Wordle game there as well. It took me six uh, no times today. today. <laughs> Okay. Any other uh, comments or questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Yes. Um, you know, I had the privilege to serve on the uh, nominating committee. So we received many, many applications from many outstanding people. But I have to tell you, these six people, along with uh, Ike Leggett, who's not up tonight, uh, former county executive Leggett, make up a terrific team. And, and we consciously tried to bring varied skills um, to the table to present to Governor Hogan uh, to, to embark on this new, this new plan that we as a legislature passed, having the right people in place to implement it uh, as its name uh, calls for and, and ensure that uh, the 24 jurisdictions implement it with fidelity, with high standards, uh, use the money wisely and implement uh, this work was very, very crucial. Now, some of the people on these six today, I know better than others. Obviously, Britt Kerwin uh, has been uh, someone I've been a big fan of. Some people say I'm in the bag for Britt Kerwin, uh, and I guess I am. I'm a big fan of his. And, and many of the others, uh, Dr. Stapleton, I, I know obviously Jennifer Rice, now the provost, um, uh, the former president of uh, Prince George Community College, Charlene Dukes, so uh, it's like uh, two or three degrees of separation. But I'm very proud of these people. And I think they do bring a breadth of experience and service. And, and we think the mix of their skills will really be uh, an asset and a treasure, I believe, to getting the uh, blueprint off the ground. So I wish them well and, and congratulate all of them. Thank you, Senator. Anyone else? OK. If not, thank you all. And we will move to the next group, uh, the Affordable Housing Trust Board of Trustees. And first up is 
Shirley Butler Walker, uh, District 28, Senator Ellis. Thank you, Chairman Young and committee members. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you to uh, see the great work that all of you are doing and with the judges and other members of the photo uh, board. Uh, so uh, Ms. Walker, I'd like to introduce Ms. Walker from Charles County. I've never had the privilege of meeting her. Uh, this is the first time we'll be virtual. She's a highly skilled property manager, community housing, real estate and mortgage professional with more than 20 years of experience in residential and commercial markets. She's seasoned and highly qualified. She has so many certifications behind her name. Uh, I think I count at least seven, including broker, property manager. So she's very um, um, experienced in the housing area. And especially she looks for projects in her professional life that are socially responsible. And so I present to her, uh, I present her to you and thank you so much for your time, Ms. Walker. Ms. Walker. Yes, good evening to everyone. Um, would you like to say anything, Ms. Walker? Um, well, I'll start by saying I've always been honored by the position and there is accuracy in a lot of acronyms behind my name. I pride myself on education so that I am forward thinking and have my finger on the pulse of what's happening in housing. Uh, to that, uh, just in August, here comes another acronym. Uh, I became a PCAM, which is the highest designation you can receive for residential property management. I also hold the same highest designation for multifamily, which is apartments um, as well. So I'm gonna keep the education train going. Um, and hopefully uh, the state of Maryland will find that the time that I put into the education that appears to be most applicable to the affording housing, housing trust, um, I have it. And I certainly would like to share it in its voluntary capacity. All right, thank you very much. Any, uh, any other comments or questions uh, for Ms. Walker? If not, thank you very much. And we will move on to Sandra Edmonds Crew, Dr. Crew, uh, District 25, and Senator Griffith. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair, and members of the Executive Nominations Committee. I am actually thrilled to be able to speak on behalf of Dr. Crew, who's not just a constituent, but is actually a friend. Uh, Dr. Crew is the Dean of the Howard University School of Social Work, where many of you know I graduated uh, back in the 80s, she wasn't Dean then, but she has just demonstrated such a commitment to community. I believe everyone has a copy of her CV and you can see the many uh, peer reviewed uh, publications and journal articles that she's written and just a, a legacy of real service on behalf of our community. It is such a joy to um, introduce her and, and to share her in her uh, nomination for the Affordable Housing Trust Board and to say that she has just been a true leader and the way that I've watched her interact with students and just pour into the lives of those students has just been amazing. I am so happy uh, that Dr. Crew is, is able to serve the state and represent the 25th district on this board. And so it's my pleasure to speak on her behalf. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Crew. Thank you so much, Senator Griffith. It's indeed a pleasure to serve the state of Maryland and my district, um, the Maryland Affordable Housing Trust. It is one of the most um, fulfilling positions that I have and making sure that we make affordable housing available to all uh, who are in our state. So I'm indeed pleased to serve uh, in this capacity. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? If not, we'll move on to Elizabeth Glenn, uh, District 6, and Senator Stallings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate this opportunity to introduce Elizabeth Glenn. <clears throat> Elizabeth Glenn is a member of the Maryland Affordable Housing Trust and Board of Trustees, and has been appointed and has been serving, serving since 2020. Um, I had the opportunity to speak with her today, and she was telling me about how 
the, uh, the meetings have been going and how they've been updating everything and been ahead of everything. And I appreciate somebody that's very thorough, and she is. So I think it's a, a good board and uh, an opportunity for one of my constituents to serve here. So I want to introduce uh, a good constituent and I think a hard worker. And I want to thank her again for the opportunity of talking with her, uh, Elizabeth Glenn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Glenn. Thank you, uh, Senator Stalling. And thank you, uh, Chairman Young and uh, Vice Chairman and the nominating committee. It is really my honor and privilege to be a public servant in many aspects, but the Marlin Affordable Housing Trust for all the years that I've served has been one of the most uh, pleasurable and honorable and cherished um, stewardships that I have encountered. I am highly pleased to, be, to work with such esteemed colleagues. Our chair, Alice Pender Hughes, has been a top-notch professional, as have other members of the committee. And so, and so I am honored to, to be reappointed and I look forward to serving with my esteemed colleagues. And I thank you so much for the honor. Okay, any comments or questions for Ms. Glenn? If not, thank you very much. And we have three more appointees on this board. The next is Dale McArdle and Sen uh, District 41, Senator Carter. Senator Carter here. Thank you, Mr. Chair uh, and members of the committee. Okay. It's my privilege and honor to introduce my constituent, Mr. Daryl McArdle. Mr. McArdle has lived in Baltimore since 1982 and retired as director of housing services at Catholic Charities after serving over 26 years there. He is an active member of our community and among other things, he currently is chair of the Bond Secures Unity Properties Board it's a board, he's a board member of Sisters Academy of Baltimore and is involved in the Women's Housing Coalition. Dale enjoys spending time with his wife, Marilyn Duker, and their two children, Ian Flannery and Flannery. He's also, he also enjoys biking, photography, and travel. And so it's my privilege now to introduce Dale McArdle. Are you here, Dale? Yes, thank you, Senator. It's a very nice introduction. Um, I just want to, I'm just honored to be uh, reappointed. I've been on the uh, trust for, as I looked at my little narrative that I sent out on Friday, I've been on the uh, trust for about 20 years now. It didn't seem like 20 years, but uh, it's a, it's been a really wonderful group led by our, our, our great leader, Alice, who's uh, um, if anybody, any of you need uh, somebody to run an efficient meeting. Uh, Alice can take care of that for you. She's really a great, uh, a great leader and a great um, person to uh, run a meeting. Um, you do a lot of good, and it's a, a it's always been a good group of people, fun people, and uh, knowledgeable people. And um, uh, I'm just glad to be a part of it. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Mr. McArdle? Uh, if not, thank you very much. And we will move on to uh, Alice Pinderhues, uh, District 40, and Senator Hayes. Good, good evening, colleagues. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Miss Alice Pinderhues is here, but I'll tell you, as a young man growing up in Baltimore City Public Schools, um, Alice Pinderhues appeared on my report card many, many days um, this Alice Pendehues stand on the shoulder and a legacy of her mother, Alice Pendehues, the first woman to serve as superintendent for Baltimore City Public Schools. And given, you know, her contributions, the Baltimore City School Building headquarters is actually named after her. And so it's a pleasure that I come here today to introduce not only a constituent, but a neighbor who lives almost four doors away. Um, and she has built on a legacy of our of, of her mom and continuing to contribute to the community from various uh, positions. She currently, in addition to the Affordable Housing Trust Board, she also serves on the Civil Service Commission, Judicial Nominating Commission, the Judicial Compensation Commission. Um, she served in the past on the boards of the University of Maryland General Hospital, uh, you name it, the Gilman School, the American Red Cross, and so on and so forth. And so I'm not sure if Ms. Penny Hughes is with us this evening, but I think some of our colleagues have already spoke, have already spoken to um, her professionalism and directness and, and efficiency and ability to run a meeting. So 
without further ado, um, if Alice is here, I'm happy um, to welcome her, but definitely I would encourage this committee to vote favorable for Ms. Alice Pender Hughes. Okay, um, Ms. Pender Hughes, are you here? Good afternoon. Thank you, okay. Senator, and thank you, members of the commission. And I really want to thank all of the board members' great comments. Um, Senator Hayes, you might not know this, but I have been the chair of this board since it was instituted, for everybody's knowledge, back with Senator Blount and Senator Leventan. It's hard for me not to act like I'm 36 when I put that out there, but um, it's been a pleasure working with all of these great people. We've done great work. And we look forward to doing continued great work. And I really want to thank all of the board members for their kind remarks and the hard work they do and all the great comments. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments? If not, thank you. And we will move on to the last member tonight for this board, um, Michael Russo and District 33 and Senator Riley again. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to introduce Michael Russo to the committee. Uh, Mr. Russo is a graduate of Lafayette uh, College, uh, got his law degree from Catholic University, has been practicing real estate law in Annapolis for over 30 years. He's uniquely qualified to be on this board. I'm sure he'll bring uh, many uh, great perspectives based on his experience and would highly recommend the appointment and confirmation by this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Russo. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the opportunity to serve on this committee. Uh, I come from the sort of the other side in that my, my 30 years of practice has been representing uh, title companies, buyers and sellers and those who uh, whose funds fund this board. And uh, I look forward to working with this esteemed group of colleagues and also to uh, to making sure that the folks that I've represented understand how important uh, what the Affordable Housing Trust is and uh, where that money goes. So thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Any comments, questions? If, if not, uh, thank you. And we'll move to the Juvenile Service Education Board. Uh, we have four appointees there. Uh, the first is Dr. Catherine Gamage. Uh, she has a She's in my district. She has a doctorate, doctorate in organizational uh, leadership, worked in education, uh, teaching, and otherwise for uh, a long time before she came to Maryland. Uh, she served as the director of the um, Solro Academy in Kemar. Uh, her work there included uh, developing workforce and uh, comprehensive uh, Problems for children in the juvenile system. And uh, Dr. Gamage, are you there? We just admitted her. Yes, so I'm here. there she is. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gamage? Yes, how are you, sir? Good. Would you like to say something to the group? No, I'm just excited to have this opportunity to improve the lives of you. Okay. Any questions or comments for Dr. Yamich? If not, thank you very much. And thank you. We'll move on to uh, uh, Monica Goldman. Uh, Dr. Goldman. Goldson, I'm sorry. And that's uh, District uh, 23 and Senator Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Executive Nominations Committee. As Senator of the 23rd Legislative District, it gives me great pleasure to seek the committee's support in appointing Dr. Monica Golson to the Juvenile Services Education Board. I've known Dr. Golson for over 15 years. First as principal of Frederick Douglass High, Frederick Douglass High School, the uh, two-way football champions in the great state of Maryland. Uh, then, while serving as vice chairman of the school board, supporting her elevation to associate superintendent. And ever since then, I've had the ability to watch her rise to chief operating officer, uh, deputy superintendent, and arguably one of the best CEOs of a public school system in our state. I thank her for her willingness to serve 
And colleagues, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Monica Golson. Okay, Dr. Golson. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you, Senator Watson, for an amazing introduction. And to the Senate Executive Nomination Committee for your consideration in selecting me for the Juvenile Services Education Program Committee. I look forward to serving the state of Maryland. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you saw Senator my Griffith. hand raised. It might have blended in with the background. I just wanted to join Senator Watson and well, uh, and his compliments of our wonderful CEO, uh, Dr. Monica Golson. He laid her credentials out very well, but I just wanted to add my support to the nomination. All right, thank you, Senator. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Pesky. To add, add a third to this. Uh, she's our gem, who we're very proud of, and uh, all of Prince George's County is glad to have her. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, then thank you again. And we will move to Dr. Peter Leon of District 19 and Senator Kramer. Good evening again, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Ben Kramer here to introduce Dr. Peter Leon, who is a retired professor at the Department of Counseling, Higher Education and Special Education at the University of Maryland. He has expansive knowledge education and experience with regard to youth delinquency and prevention and intervention. And he is extensively published uh, in all of these areas, including uh, the subject of juvenile justice. And he will be an exceptional asset to the Juvenile Services Education Board. And I thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Dr. Leanne. Uh, th thank you very much, Senator Kramer. Um, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to be nominated to uh, by the Executive Nominations Committee to serve on the Juvenile Services Education Board. I've, sent, I've spent most of my professional career at the University of Maryland College Park and have studied and um, advocated for uh, education reform for our most um, needy um, adolescents and young adults uh, who have great potential. So thank you for um, nominating me and for including me in this hearing. Uh, thank you. Uh, proud of all the Terps that have been here tonight as a Maryland graduate. Uh, last member of this group is uh, Dr. Bernard Sadusky, and he's from District 36, Senator Hershey, who couldn't make it, but uh, sends his greetings and strong support. So, uh, uh, Mr. Sadusky. Chairman, I'd be happy to introduce uh, Senator Pensky, certainly. Dr. Sadusky. I think many of us know Bernie, who is acting state superintendent. He's been in charge of uh, Maryland Association of Community Colleges for many, many yeah. years. And uh, he's done a great job. He is salt of the earth. He has a vision and represents people very well. And I'd like to bring you uh, Dr. Sadusky. Okay, hey, Dr. Sadusky. Good uh, seeing you. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, Senator Eckert has a comment. Oh, okay, Senator Eckert. Thank you very much, Senator Addy Eckert. For the record, I would also like to support the nomination of Dr. Sadowski to this uh, very important board. He has been quite a leader on the Eastern Shore. We've worked with him through the years, and as uh, my colleagues uh, stated, he is well known throughout the state. Thank you. And great with the community college, just to yes, Dr. Sadusky, are you here? Uh, do you have him in the room? Okay. Oh, uh, here he comes. All right. Can you hear me, Senator? I uh, can hear you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this nomination. Uh, I, I, um, uh, I think it's a step forward to serving a population of students who, um, who have sometimes been forgotten. Uh, collectively as a team, we have a, a, a vision going forward to make sure that these folks are productive citizens uh, when they leave their incarceration and move back to the lo local school systems. Okay, thank you, Bernie. Um... Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, thank you. And we'll move on. We have three more appointees, then 
next two are on the Lottery and Gaming Control uh, Commission. And the first is Harold Hodges and it's District 17 and Senator Kagan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, appreciate it. Um, as with my other two nominees, before I bring people before the executive noms, I really like to get to know them a little bit and I do not know Mr. Hodges. He reached out to me three hours ago. I have a two paragraph bio. I went to his, um, to his website and found a number of pages broken, a number of links broken, a lot of information missing. And his LinkedIn page doesn't even list his primary affiliation in his bio, which I find concerning. So he has a wonderful background according to the two paragraphs that he sent me. He began his career in public service more than 30 years ago as a Peace Corps volunteer in Guinea. He has lived in Rockville um, since 2009. Um, he has served our, our country and uh, serves young people through his tutoring and stuff. I would love the opportunity to learn more about Mr. Hodges. And I wonder, Mr. Chair and colleagues, whether we might just um, postpone his, uh, his consideration for one week so I can have the opportunity to chat with Mr. Hodges. He was just appointed in September, so he has not much served. And this is very important. The State Gaming and Lottery Commission makes really critically important decisions. And I would just love to get to know Mr. Hodges a little more uh, so I can bring him with more facts and more enthusiasm for your consideration. Any other uh, comments or questions for Mr. Hodges? Mr. Chairman, I have just a comment. Senator Patterson here. I yes. certainly support the recommendation from uh, Senator Kagan. I'd like to get to know a little bit more by, from Mr. Hodges myself. I see him down in the bottom left here on my screen, but you know, I have one of the major enterprises in my district, and I certainly have a list of questions I, I would like to propose to him, but I'd like to meet you first. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hodges. Okay. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I was certainly looking forward to meeting with everyone and, and chatting, certainly looking forward to speaking more with uh, Senator Kagan um, as well. Not a problem. I look forward to coming back and speaking with, with you more. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. We will move on to uh, John Martin, who's District 7, Senator Jennings. He's up for Director of State Lottery and Gaming Control Commission. He's been there a long time. I've spoken to him. He's very easy to work with, but Senator Jennings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, J.B. Jennings for John Martin for the position of Director of the State Lottery and Gaming Control Commission. I have met with Mr. Uh, Martin and gotten known very well. Uh, incredible man. Uh, he's been with Maryland, as, as the Chairman had said, for about 10 years prior to that. He was with the Ohio Gaming Commission, but we were able to recruit him uh, in 2011, where he came here and he became the assistant director of the lottery for four years before moving on to become the managing director, the chief revenue officer, where he did that for about another five years. And then since uh, July of this year, uh, when Governor Hogan appointed him the director of the Maryland Lottery and Gaming Commission, he held that position. So I strongly recommend him. And with that, I turn it over to Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Senator Jennings, for that kind introduction. I'd also like to thank Governor Hogan for his uh, appointment on uh, July 1st of last year as the Director of Maryland Lottery and Gaming. I'd also like to thank Chairman Young, Madam Vice Chair Beidle, and the rest of the Executive Nominations Committee for your time and consideration this evening. I am truly excited about the opportunity to lead this agency as we continue on our mission to responsibly increase sales and generate much needed revenue to support a variety of good causes that benefit all Marylanders. I'm more than happy to entertain any questions you may have at this point. Okay, any questions for Mr. Martin? I see none, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I do have the Lottery and Gaming Control Commission, uh, Michelle, Fager, uh, District 38, and Senator Caruso is uh, Ms. Fager here. I'm not sure she was required to be. She wasn't scheduled to appear. Okay. 
All right. That uh, covers it. Uh, so take a minute to close this and come back to vote. We're going to stay live for the voting session, Chair Young. You're going to stay live for it? Okay. I will say I am very pleased. Uh, I watched the diversity of the committees over the last several years. and This is the most diverse group of really qualified candidates I, I think I've seen the time I've been chairing this. So, but uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the, uh, before we make the motion, I just wanted to, um, and I had an excellent meeting with uh, John Martin as well. I've had several senders request that they hadn't had a chance to meet with the lottery uh, commission yeah. folks, hoping that um, we could hold those for a moment uh, so that senders have the opportunity well, to connect. Yes, we have this one in a few next week that we want to give everybody a chance to have a, the opportunity to talk to. So uh, we will hold him and we will hold, um, oops, hold back that Senator Kagan asked for. Um, number 27, Mr. Hodges. Number 27, uh, Harold Hodges. Uh, we will hold those two. And uh, do I have a motion on the rest? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we uh, approve everyone, except we are going to hold number 27, Mr. Hodges, and number 28, Mr. Martin. Second. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any nays? Uh, then move it unanimously. And uh, with that, thank you, and we'll close the meeting. Uh, Senator Lead. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. No. Nope. Just okay. everybody stay safe and well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you. Thank